So the Green Bay Packers will play the San Francisco 49ers for the George Howes Trophy. Pretty, uh, pretty crazy game, I thought. Just Of course, it was going to be a crazy game with the Seahawks and the Packers. And one thing I thought was just fantastic was actually Matt LaFleur's play call. I thought that he called a fantastic game. Give him a lot of credit. And, like, I'll just jump into it. Like, this play, this is pretty common, but it's going to set something up in a second later on in this drive. So this was actually the first drive of the game. It's cover two man that Seattle is going to be in. And so... That's okay. Green Bay has a perfect play concept designed to beat cover two man. They'll have one receiver basically run like that, and another receiver just run a slant route underneath him. It's a pick play, essentially, or a rub route, as they call it, because that's the legal way. And, I mean, this is just basically, you know, simple way to beat man coverage. Teams do this all the time. Nothing really too fancy. However, it was very well executed. I mean, if you look, Jimmy Graham is going to get open on this play. And, you know, keep in mind, this is a third down and eight, so it's crucial to get the first down here. Jimmy Graham is open. Rodgers is able to hit him, and they do get the first down. This was a huge play in this game. I know it's just like, okay, sure, first down, I get it. You know, obviously, that's some benefit. But this play set up so much throughout the future of this game. And an example of what I'm talking about is going to happen just a couple plays later. It's now third down and seven. So again, crucial play. You have to get it off. As you see on the screen, Seattle is going to be playing a cover one blitz right now. And if you look at Green Bay, it appears as though they're going to do the same thing. Just run a little pick play. Makes sense. Good way to beat man coverage. And so since Seattle is playing man coverage, this is something they could do. But they're actually not going to do that. Both of the receivers are then going to branch out and run those two routes right there. And that's so crucial because watch what happens right when the ball is snapped. These two Seattle defensive backs are going to switch where one of them is going to say, hey, let's not have to try to run through each other. Let's just each take the guy who's about to cross over to our pathway. So we're going to switch right here. That's what we're supposed to do. But because they're actually not going to be crossing paths, basically just, just forces the defensive backs into having to run around well, they don't have to, so they basically gain an extra step instantly, and when Devontae Adams is in a one-on-one -on -one matchup and gains an extra step because of the play call, well, that's a good situation for Green Bay. He easily gets open, Rodgers is easily able to hit him. You can't blame the defense on that one, that's just brilliant play calling, just really smart football, and I mean, Matt LaFleur, I know it's his first time being a head coach, but he, he's, he's bringing his A game, no doubt about it. I actually thought that you can make the argument he outcoached Pete Carroll in this game. I thought that he, he did a really good job. So that's just one example. I'm sure throughout the week I'll give plenty more examples of what they did well and things like that. But let's get into the end of the game situation because, I mean, let's be honest, that's what's fun to talk about. And I thought that really one of the key plays was the last play that Green Bay ran on defense. It was this one. So Green Bay is now going to be playing man coverage on a third down and five. It's going to be, so it's going to be a cover one hole right here. And Seattle has a receiver running that route right there, which will be open for a second. You know, there obviously is a linebacker in the middle of the field who could potentially make a play. However, you know, if the receiver is able to cut quick enough, there should be a small window where Wilson at a certain point could make this throw. And that is where Wilson is going to look first, especially since it is Tyler Lockett. He trusts him in a big situation, so that's where Russell Wilson is going to look. However, if you notice, his assigned man is just going to create some contact right now. That's all he's going to do. So he's going to basically say, hey, if you're running into me, I'm just going to hold my ground. That's not a penalty, even though it is further down the field, because... Lockett ran into him, not the other way around. If the receiver initiates contact as a defensive back, you have a right to your ground. You're allowed to create the contact back. He's doing a good job of, you know, getting big, creating the contact, not allowing himself to get pushed around. And now Russell Wilson, he's going to have to look for something else. And it's going to take a little bit longer now for him to try to find somebody who's open. However, unfortunately for him, he just doesn't have that much longer. I mean, if you look at what's going on right over there, so there actually was a chip on Smith right there, on Preston Smith. So you'd think, okay, well, then you don't have to worry about that too much. Russell Wilson isn't even really looking in that direction too much because he's like, I have a chip there. I should be safe there. But keep in mind, another great thing that's going on right now is that look at where the right tackle is looking. He's looking over at a, a defensive back in the area. And the reason why he's doing that is because that defensive back is in charge of covering the, the back who's in charge of chipping Preston Smith right now because you know in man coverage everybody has an assigned man against an eligible receiver there is an eligible receiver even though he's blocking he's still an eligible receiver so he has an assigned man and so instead of just hanging out and basically you know taking yourself out of the play he's doing a good job of faking as though he might be blitzing which then fools the right tackle for a second saying hey 
I don't want to leave someone completely free to run to Russell Wilson. But because of that, he doesn't get back in time to block Smith. Smith is able to run over, sack Wilson, and that gets the Packers the ball back. It's a fourth down and 11, and they didn't actually have to punt there, but that's just a tough situation. You know, if it's an incomplete pass and it's now fourth down and five, I think you probably go for it. But fourth down and 11, like I see the, I see the logic either way. You know, I mean, on one hand, you don't want to give the Packers the ball back. But on the other hand, you've done an okay job at stopping them. And so maybe all you need is one more stop. Don't allow them to get two first downs. and You could be okay. It didn't happen. Again, what do you trust more, getting one stop or getting a fourth down and 11? Honestly, it's hard to really say either way. I understood the logic behind it, but it just didn't work out. You really don't want to end up giving up three points there and then having to score eight points to try to tie the game as opposed to just score one touchdown to win it. It is a big difference, uh, but it just didn't work out. And anyways, let's talk about why it didn't work out. And we'll start things off with the first third down conversion they had. It was a cover one blitz. And for the Packers, nothing fancy this time. It's Devontae Adams running that route right there. And after the ball was snapped, Devontae Adams in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, he, he won literally every one-on-one -on -one matchup he had all night. He had a monster game. And if you look at him, he is open. Yes, there is a safety deep who's actually keeping an extra eye on Adams, but he's too far deep at this point, so while Rodgers doesn't have all the room he wants to make this throw, he's going to have enough. I mean, as you see, it's a perfectly thrown ball by Rodgers. Can't ask for anything better than that. And Adams did a good job of getting open enough that he was able to make that play. I think that maybe one concern you could have if you're a Green Bay Packers fan is that, you know, now he's going to be going up against Richard Sherman next week, who's obviously a very good corner. But at the same time, you know, that's what he can do, and if he can win this badly against the Seahawks, he should at least be able to win some of those matchups against the 49ers. I mean, he was just such a force in this game. The one thing I would kind of say there is you got to find a way to go down inbounds on that play. I mean, you don't want to go out of bounds there, but obviously it was still a great play just to get the first down, but you really would have loved to make the catch stay inbounds so that way you could, you know, burn an extra timeout. Again, I'm nitpicking. You'll, you'll take the first down and to get the ball, you know, that much further down the field. You would like to see him stay in bounds, but not the end of the world, especially because on the next third down, this play would happen. It's third down and nine, and for Seattle, they're learning from their mistakes. You know, once again, it's going to be a cover one blitz, but this time, it's going to be a double team. The safety is going to make sure that he is covering Adams no matter what. Adams runs deep, he's going to be on Adams. So, Basically, this means for Rodgers, just find somebody else, and the person that he's going to trust in this situation is the former Seattle Seahawk, Jimmy Graham. He's running that route right there, good route against this type of concept, and take a look at how open he gets right when his ball is snapped, he gets decently open. I mean, he's definitely going to make this catch no matter what. If this was a first down and 10, you'd love this situation, but on a third down and 9, he has to get the first down. That being said, he is open. Rodgers makes an okay throw, not the best throw, but Jimmy Graham is just able to get the first down marker, at least according to the refs. There's definitely some controversy there. I think that he might have gotten it. I'm actually really not sure. It's super close. When I was first watching it, I thought that he absolutely did not get it, but keep in mind two things. One thing is that Jimmy Graham, actually the first thing that touched the ground was his elbow. It wasn't his knee. And also, the looks like the marker is a little bit off on the field. The yellow line is a little bit past that 36-yard uh, line, whereas it looked like the, the stick is actually a little bit in front of it. So that also comes into play a little bit. It's very close. And at the end of the day, if you're Seattle, you can't let them get that close. So, you know, I mean, I think definitely no asterisks next to this win by the Packers whatsoever. There was plenty of missed calls that happened and hurt both teams. So... So yeah, I mean, I'm not going to try to take away from that play. It was a great play. Rodgers made a great throw, and give credit to Jimmy Graham for being able to make the catch. I mean, actually, I said Rodgers made a great throw. He actually didn't make a great throw. It was a little bit underthrown, but, you know, Graham was able to still find a way to make the grab and get his body at least close enough to the first down marker that the ref gave him the call. So yeah, I mean, that's what I thought of this game, and now the divisional round is over, and I think so far through these two weeks, I've done a pretty good job of, of talking about these games beforehand and previewing them. I do think that's kind of where I personally shine. I definitely have my faults as a YouTuber and as a sports personality, but I do think I do a pretty good job of previewing these things. You know, I've gotten three games wrong, but one of the games I got wrong was the Eagles-Seahawks game, and you can make the argument that 
the only reason that the Eagles lost was because Wentz went down, although I personally wouldn't. And then the other two games I got wrong was the Vikings beating the Saints and then also the Titans beating the Ravens. I don't think anybody got those two right. But also in both of those games, I said beforehand, I thought they were going to be close games. And I think people were sleeping on the underdog in both of those games. So I'm definitely proud of, of what I've said so far in my preview videos. Again, don't want to pat myself on the back too much. I've also said a bunch of dumb things. But anyways, we'll you know just move on and hopefully I can sort of keep it going moving on. I mean, I'm also the guy who said Dwayne Haskins will be better than Kyler Murray. And that take isn't looking so great right now. So, you know, you take the good with the bad with this YouTube channel. but. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, thanks for watching.